Hello! Welcome back! This is Tension 1913. No, we're not really gonna do that. This yeah. is Tension 1913. And goes to films. And we're Let's Play Doom 2. The Doominator. The Doominators. Yeah. Anyways, in the last episode, Dan was talking a little bit about carpet bombing. And I figured I'd give you a lesson on what carpet bombing is. Long time ago, Lord of Carpet. Yeah. His name was Carpet. And anyways, Sir he Carpet. Him. Yeah, he made... Well, actually... Of Ruggington. Yeah, of Ruggington. I like it. Anyways, carpet bombing, Dan. Yeah. I've had it done once or twice. Yep. Uh, it's when they take my carpet and they put it and they bomb it and they get rid of all the roaches and all the nasty little creatures that are in there and carpet bomb. Wow, I thought I had more material than this. Sorry. <laughs> 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 that line of thought just uh, just kind of derailed there. Yeah, because I was thinking about carpets and then bombing on that and I just forget it, man. All right, Pete. I know something we can talk about. What? Airline food. <laughs> oh yeah, what is the deal with airline food? <laughs> I know Jerry Seinfeld likes to likes to talk about it quite a bit, but you know what? Like seriously, what's the deal with all the airline food and all the uh, and all those extra fares they add on? I know. Yeah, what's the deal, huh? You can't even go flying anymore. Like I know it's safer than driving because there's less likely that you'll get into an accident, but if you get an accident in the air, that's it, man. Yeah, I it's know. Over. You're dead. That's why they charge you, I think. You know, one thing that comedians often do when they when they want to fill up time is crowd work. Yeah, the, so yeah. They make I, fun I, of the I, audience. I, so where are you guys from, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What do you do for a living, sir? Yeah, what, what do you guys, what do you guys do for a living? What, yeah. what, a plumber? Are you a plumber? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, yeah what you're playing the pipe right, huh? <laughs> so, yeah, is this, is this your, is this your, your girlfriend you're with here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, uh, so she's not your girlfriend, so what, are you married, oh. sir, or ma ma'am, are you married, uh? Oh, he hasn't proposed. Uh, oh, awkward. Oh, okay. okay, uh, okay. Maybe we can make fun of the demons, like, yeah, so make fun of their clothes and stuff. Nice spike nipples. <laughs> yeah. Nice spike nipples, Coles. Nice job. <laughs> Did you ever tell that story? No, I never told it. Uh, do you want to? I don't care, go ahead. Well, we went to see Mitch Fatel one time. He's his comedian. Yeah, he, he's kind of like... He has this style where he talks about really gross, like, no, I don't know if you would call it gross, but like pornographic material, but he kind of does it in a very cute way where he gets away with it, and, and, uh, and it's pretty funny. And he had this, uh, this guy that went on before him, like a comedian, a warm-up comedian, and we went there and we were sitting like right up front because we do that sometimes, and this, this like warm-up comedian just started laying into Pete, like talking about how he bought his, his clothes at, at Kohl's, because I guess the comedian was like, some trendy, like, new, gay new, uh, L.A. guy. And he was just ripping Pete apart, like, the whole set. Like, because his clothes weren't as nice as the comedians. And he kept, kept calling him Coles, because he kept saying that that's where Pete, like, shopped. And, uh, it, it was, it was just awkward. Because, like, Pete, like, Pete was being a good sport about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Like, yeah, he was asking me, like, where do I get... Like, where do I get where I find my porn at, and have I ever had sex with a woman, and all yeah. this stuff, and I was like, whoa, man. But, uh, it, but, uh, like, a lot of comedians talk about how, like, crowd work is, like, the cheapest form of comedy that you could possibly do. You go up there and rip on, like, unsuspected people who aren't prepared to be, you know, like, ridiculed. Them, yeah. But... Unless they deserve it, like the drunk, uh, the drunk assholes. Yeah, the drunk assholes that scream out at people. Yeah, or like, ah, ah they want you to do a joke that you, you, like, uh, like, like, uh, it's like people requesting a song. It's like, do the joke about ducks, you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyways, they were, this guy was ripping me a new one, and, um... Like for like his whole set, like that's all he talked about. Yeah, he was just going. He kept going back to me about about shit. I, 
You know the funny thing was that was my first, my sister, one of my sister's first comedy shows, and I figured that the the, the main comedian Mitch Patel would bust her chop, but he, they ended up busting mine. So I guess karma works that way. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, and the guy had, like had this like women's shirt, and because Pete was like such a good sport at the end of the the show, they had him come up and then and uh. Like they were just like ripping on him the whole time, and uh... yeah, because even the even the other guy was ripping, even the main comedian was ripping on me a little bit. Yeah, so they were trying to be nice, and they were gonna like give him a CD. Like they they, they had like two, they had like three or four CDs that Mitch Fatel made, and like he was like, which one, which one do you want? And Pete was like, I got all those CDs already. And so it was like I thought that was so nice because like they were just ripping him apart the whole time, and he and it, and he just showed like he was one of their. He was probably a bigger fan than anybody else in there, and they were just destroying him the whole time. And he had like every CD that they had already, mm. so I thought that was like it was so poetic that they that that he just he just happened to have them all, but he just chose one. I'm but gonna give it to you, huh? Yeah, you did give it to me. What the hell? The walls. Are but yeah, crowd work. I listen to a lot of uh, like comedy interviews. Like there's one, there's one called Stand Up Sit Down. Hey, look, it's a bug in the game. Mm. But there's one that Pete told me about called Stand Up Sit Down. That's pretty cool. Where uh, this guy Sonny Fox interviews uh, comedians and they talk about stuff like that. And uh, and also there's another one that I listen to on YouTube. I forget what it's called. But there's another guy. You could probably go on my channel and look at my subscriptions and find it. But there's another guy who interviews comp comedians, and that's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. Like as as an amateur, uh, I'm not really a comedian, but I like try to make jokes and I try to be funny and I try like as as an amateur artist slash performer. I guess that's what I'll call myself. It's kind of interesting to hear comedians talk about their craft and what they do, and uh, and yeah. So it's kind of. Uh, it's kind of cool to look look for those interview style uh, shows on YouTube and podcasts and stuff like that. I also listen to like I also listen to Bill Burr's podcast. Yeah, he's funny. There's like a there's a channel called Paperback Bandits on YouTube that where Bill Burr uh, talks about things and answers like relationship advice. And he and I guess a lot of people criticize him for being like misogynistic, but he's he's a comedian. He's joking. Like, ever people take comedians too seriously sometimes? Yeah, like, 99.9% .9 of the shit that we say on this, on, on this, on when we do Let's Play, it's, it's fake. Yeah. Unless we say, no, this is really true. This is, this is really... Yeah. Like, those stories about Ant that I told you about many, many episodes ago, those are true. Yeah. But, like, so most of the shit that we say is all made up. Randomly made so that we can be entertained. Yep. And Bill Burr also has like Dave Attell and other guests on his podcast sometimes. It's pretty cool. Dave Attell's awesome. Probably one of my favorite comp comedians. Yep. We went to see him one time. Him, Mitch Fattel, uh, Mitch Fett Hedberg, and uh, who else was on the tour? Oh, Louis Black. That was a good show. Yep. Went to go see that. And, uh, there's a giant snowstorm going on. And I was screaming out the window. I was like, You're not stopping us from going to this show, Mother Nature! And my friend Todd was driving and Minivan, the preferred vehicle choice for creeps. Yeah, well, he was just borrowing it from his mom because there's a bunch of people he was driving on. But yeah, yeah, that is true. I used to drive a, a minivan and my creepiness level went up like 200%. Yeah. Yep. Did you tell people they were looking cut and they should cut down on their carbs? Yeah, I, yep, I certainly did. Alright. Where am I? Anything I missed in here? How do I? Oh, this button over here. Yeah, I remember when I used to work over at my old, my last job. I used to listen to stand up, sit down. It was very awesome. Yep. 
they even like I I listen to it through the podcast. I don't know. Is it like a radio show normally though? Yeah, it's not on anymore, but they saved all the old all the old shows. It's pretty good. Yeah. There are roots growing on the wall in here. Mm -hmm. Where's the trees though, huh? I don't know. I can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah, you can't. Why did I step into this close quarters place? I don't know. What do I feel like every time I, I sit down and make some Let's Play videos, like my stomach starts bothering me. I don't know what the fuck. Really? Yeah, I think it's just because I see all the shit. I'm like, god damn. Are you slouching when you make them? I don't know. I'm sitting back now. I'm feeling a lot better than I was before. But Maybe it's because you're slouching and you're putting all this pressure on your guts. Maybe. I think this level's pretty much done. Sweet. I'm getting the hell out of here. I actually didn't have a, as hard of a time as I thought I would have. I'm done with the courtyard. And my days as a, as a uh, dukedom are over. As a what? Dukus? Now where are we to sit still? Oh shoot! I have a tough monster to greet me at the beginning of the level. Save my game. This is kind of a. This might be a boring episode. Oh, it's going to be. You can't fault us uh, a few episodes if, we're, if they're not as uh, on par as some other ones. Because this seriously, you know what this this game reminds me of? Like a triathlon or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I'll just speed through it as fast as I can. I hate. Normally I don't like speeding through gunfights like Rambo. Because you get careless. But maybe I'll just like try and do this one fast. I'll, maybe I'll shoot for par if I can. Let's see, normally I like to go around the outside. I like to uh, patrol the perimeter of, of levels to make sure nobody comes up behind me. These guys uh, are going to be tough. So hopefully my hard drive is going to come in the mail pretty soon. Yeah, that'd be cool. I can get back to animation, and I can finish up my zombie cartoon and post it where people can actually see it and it won't be a piece of crap. Mm. So your hard drive, you just pull a brand new hard drive? Yeah. Brian recommended one from some online website, so I ordered it. You ready? No. I've bought things from Newegg before, but he showed you some kind of tiger. Tiger Direct. I believe that was what it was. Those are good. But Brian was saying that there was some kind of disaster in Asia that was, I think there were earthquakes there that uh, might make the, uh, the cost of hard drives go up a bit. What might make this, uh. You know what? I was thinking of, uh. Like, you, how you were saying about doing, like, multiple. a multiplayer game. Like, maybe it would be more interesting if we did a couple of levels multiplayer. But then, but then we'd have to go through all the levels again that we already did. a yard sale and I just shot the owners of the yard sale and now I'm taking all their stuff. Well yeah I gotta take all their stuff. Yep. And for some reason you have to happen to go buy a yard sale and the people that are doing the yard sale are dead. 
I hope to God to take this stuff. Yeah. Because that's what they have the yard sale for. I know. For people to take their stuff, granted they need money, but where they're going, they won't need money. That's right. And I won't even say they're going to hell. I'll say they can go into heaven too, alright? You don't people, need... it's not all bad. You don't need an old toaster or a microwave in heaven. Yeah. You don't need... They're going to have all those. You don't need some old crinkled up comic books. Yeah, because you're going to be able to read them on your Kindle. Yeah, you, every, in heaven everybody has the latest technology. Yeah. I think I already went. Even technology that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. They've got it. Yep. Stroll right in the front door now that I've made the round. Yeah, Earth in the future is made up of temples. Yeah, no. Weird temples and factories. Rusty architectures with moats. It's kind of weird how it, how uh, it's blended with like medieval style architecture and the future at the same time. The demons supposedly bring their own reality with them, according to one of those bumps that we read a while back. Really? Yeah. I always get lost in this level. No, their own reality sucks. Yeah, your reality sucks. Stop bringing your reality yeah, into my... you have palm trees and maybe like... I don't know, freaking uh... Ladies? Who are the ladies, yeah. huh? Demons? Ladies with coconut, like, bras and grass skirts. Yeah. And like... Like, lays. I guess demons don't Not, um, and when I say lays, I don't mean like the flowery necklace, I mean like the, the potato chips, because yeah. I'm kind of hungry right now. Look at these guys. This is like the millionth time I've chainsawed these guys to death. Alright. You have to think in the original Doom Let's Play, you weren't going to use the chainsaw because you thought it was dumb because there was no trees anywhere. Yeah. But now I'm kind of doing it because I'm conserving ammo. Like in, in Doom, the shareware version of Doom, uh, it's easy to, um, it's easy to, uh, well, it's easy to, to, like, turn your nose up at things, but, like, when you have nothing, you, you're, you're not as picky. Yeah, that's true. When monsters shoot heat-seeking missiles at you and... You, you don't have the, uh, the luxury of, of not uh, doing certain things sometimes. Anyways, Dan, I think we're good. We're at the 18 minute mark. Alright. In the next episode, we'll continue on. We'll catch 1913. And go see films. See you later.